結局。Okay. I was told by somebody in my comments shortly after I uploaded this video that this head was hung upside down. And that makes 100% complete sense. And、uh, after doing some research, I found out they were 100% right. This HC is supposed to be on the top, and then Harold's supposed to follow. So this is supposed to be flipped. And that was no wonder I had to, had to remove so much material from this handle. In order to make it fit, and I actually made this fit good. See, as you can see, I'm trying to take the wedge out. I was going to try to save the handle. I'm just going to cut it and use my. Hang this thing right. And I'll mention their name here in a little bit. I'll read it. I believe it's a woman、uh, from the name, but she was very right. And、uh, I'm very glad she mentioned that because I had no idea. It split great and everything. I would have had no idea. The only thing that. Gives that away to me more than anything, really, is、uh, how hard it was to get seated. And they were telling me, I think the eye on the top of the axe is either smaller on the top or on the bottom. I'll have to read their comment. Sounded like they knew what they were talking about. And they spotted it pretty quick, too, from the video. So, big thank you to them. I'll mention their name here in a little bit once I read it. I'm going to get this thing cut off here. So long of the handle. There she be. Okay, now make sure I do it right this time. HC goes at the top. Yes, I had it. Yes. Yeah, that even looks right. I remember putting it on there and even looking at it, thinking that kind of looks upside down. Linda McNeely was the, I'm guessing that's a woman by the name, but they were the one that told me that it was upside down. That one side of the eye is larger than the other for a reason. And that makes perfect sense why that was, I had so much trouble getting that on there. So then that would mean that's the top. This bottom side, I'm guessing, should be larger. And the, yeah, yeah it even looks to be.、And、the top side is smaller. So let's see how this other one fits on there. Maybe it'll fit a lot easier. It's still gonna have to have material taken off. That is right, though, without a doubt. It even looks better. And I believe I'm still gonna have to take some material off, though. But I may try to beat it down on there and see what we can get. I think that'll do. That'll do. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get that straight. That was so much easier with it right side up. It even looks better. So, Linda McNeely, is that what I said? That's a lesson learned the hard way. It's usually how I learn. Yep, 
is a much tighter fit, much better fit. Very tight fit. Look at the front. I think that's where it's got a little bit of space. No, the front's actually pretty tight. You can see that? Much better than on the other one. The back, there's a little bit of space, but you can see how tight that is on the sides there. So much easier. So what she was saying, like I said, I think the eye of the axe head is bigger on the bottom and smaller on the top, I think is how she said it. I'm guessing that's a she from the name. Um, the, reason, the reason for that is so this shoulder down here can fit within that big eye and it won't get so tight is what I'm guessing anyways. And the bigger one down here and then up top here where it's smaller, the wedge can spread the axe handle out and kind of fill that gap in. I'm actually pretty happy with that tight right now. Looks right now. I actually really like that handle too. I like the other one too though. The other handle was pretty heavy, heavier than this one. That's so tight though for, to, for where the wedge was supposed to go. Look at that. There's hardly any space now. Ooh. See if the old knife can spread it out at all. Old survivor, what Tommy is. His head ran over from a big zero turn, still keeping strong. Box the attention. To the wild acting sometimes. Sometimes I wonder. I didn't do a little damage permanent when I ran over his head. Sometimes he gets a little feisty. It's crazy. Okay. Yeah, this one is much tighter already. I like this space here, I mean. The wedge goes, it's much tighter than the other one was. Come here, watch out. Come on, Tommy. Give me a wedge. Come on, get in. Get over at least. that down a little bit it's actually make them a little wide better than not big enough okay. I'm gonna do the same thing I did you'll see this probably before you see the wrong doing so I'm gonna edit this and re-upload it because I want to show you it done right first, and then I'll show you the dumb part after. That's Linda McNeely pointed out, and I'm glad she did. Very glad. I think she said something to the nature of, like, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings or something like that, or make you mad or something. And it's I don't take it that way at all. I'm actually, I appreciate that very much. Now, I want to say this too. I'm an amateur axe maker, 100%. Amateur axe maker. Anyways, I'm an amateur axe maker. I'm very comfortable with an axe. Very comfortable with doing firewood. Mm -hmm. I would consider myself pretty experienced with swinging an axe. As far as making an axe goes, I'm an amateur. Completely. Go ahead, Jen. Let's start driving it.
much easier. I don't know what that wedge is made out of, but anyways, that is a tight fit now. That is snug. Much lower on the shoulder here than the other one was too. You know, if you, I'm sure you probably noticed that it looks looks much better. I need to trim this stuff off. Need that wedge. I just want to make sure I get it far enough. That you got me out here doing at night, Linda McNeely. Joking. Very thankful that she mentioned that. As soon as she told me, I wanted to fix it. Because I wanted to upload the video, but I wanted to have it done right in the video, too. So, very glad she told me when she did. This excess glue. I don't know about you all, but me, I'm a, I'm a big... And it probably ain't the best way to be, but I've made a lot of mistakes. And a lot of times, it's because I run and just try to do things... Kind of like I did with this, but I, I did research this. I don't know how I got the axe head upside down. It shows you how amateur I am when it comes to making an axe. But uh, that's something I think from now on I'll remember. After uh, having so much trouble with it. This, you've seen the difference. You'll see, or you will see the difference. Because this one will be first. You'll see how quick this one went compared to my other one. I, had to, I trimmed a lot of material off. And the reason why is because, like she said, the axe heads are made that way purposely to where one side is bigger than the other. And, uh, I actually made it fit good, too. Pretty good. Pretty good. I won't say real good. I made it fit pretty good, but it was because I, I had to trim so much. I could have made it fit pretty good a lot easier. There's one little gap on the top here that I didn't have before that I do have now. As you can see, all oh, this filled in good. Back there is somewhat of a gap. I have a piece over here that may work for that. Like I said, amateur, amateur going from what I've learned on YouTube mainly with this, same way I learned how to swing an ax and I feel, I don't feel, not bragging about myself, I don't feel amateur at swinging an ax. Feel pretty experienced after doing it every, or many, many days of the winter, you get, you get better at it. Let me learn my lesson I did earlier. You haven't seen that yet. Pick those all kinds of different times put together. Right now, I think it's 12 o'clock at night, 1 o'clock in the morning, maybe. And after I got that comment, I said, I'm fixing that thing. I even told my wife, I said, okay, got this axe head upside down. I'm going outside and fixing it. For one thing, I've got some more firewood I'm supposed to be doing this week. If I'm not mistaken, I've got quite a few different people that talk like they wanted some this week. Just talked to a guy earlier today, too. He wanted me to deliver a truckload, and I told him I don't deliver just truckloads anymore because, uh, because it's not really worth it to me, honestly. Sometimes you do your gas and everything. But uh, he said he would be willing to pay more 
for just a truckload because that's all the wood he could fit. And I said, if he's willing to pay to where I feel it's profitable, then that, that would be fine. And we had talked about a price and he's still saying he's got to measure his carport and see if he's got enough space or whatever. So two mosquitoes in here. I could eat a lot by them things. Eat a lot. Seems like everybody around me a lot of the times won't even be getting bit and I'll be getting eat alive. Why? Now what I'm trying to do here is where I kind of banged it down on there. It it kind of scraped into the wood. I'm just trying to get that excess wood out. I already got this side. I wonder how well this handle will hold up. It seems really soft, whatever it is, and it looks it looks like spalted maple. I don't know. Somebody else can probably tell me. I'll show you again. I love this handle. It's, it's actually caught my eye more than any of them. Just for just because of the looks, honestly. I think I've redeemed myself now, maybe. Maybe not. Anyways, I'll be taking this out to test it probably this week. I filled the gap in, as you can see. The little piece that I had. We'll see how this handle holds up. But there's the right way to do it. If you keep watching the video, you'll see. I'll see the wrong way. I'll show you how. Show you how to do it the wrong way. I should have noticed just by how the arch on this, how much more rounded the arch is than this up here. Which then this was missing a corner too, so I, I kind of thought about that. You can't really tell now, but if you remember, it was missing a big chunk, and I kind of tried to blend it. But there it is right. There's that handle. How that was... <laughs> So much faster, so much faster doing it this way. I would say earlier, well, polishing the head took me a long time too. But even just trimming the handle down earlier with what I had, because I was using a knife mainly, uh, trimming that down took probably an hour and a half, something like that. This took maybe 10 minutes. So right, it's a lot easier. She did mention too, I said this already, that she thought maybe these handles were rejects or something like that. And I'm not sure if that's the case or not, but either way, I'm very happy with these handles. I don't really see much in them that, much wrong with them myself. I'll take those rejects all day. Anyways, there's that handle. As long as they look like this anyways, I will. Handle. This spalted looking maple handle. It is seated good now. It's tight. See, that's pretty, even the front. I mean, there's really no space there, hardly. Side. The back. Very little gap there. That's actually seated much better than it was earlier on the other handle. So all in all, that turned out good. Learning from a mistake. Thank you, uh, Linda McNeely. I can't remember if I said your name right or not earlier, but you're absolutely right. That was on upside down. Right. And much easier to fit that way too. Much easier. Listen, learn for me. <laughs> Thank you, Linda.
Here it is, the place I've been talking about where I get the axe handles. About to go in here and see what they got. I'm pretty excited. Maybe find some good axes already put together too. my kids are pretty loud and they're just now probably about to lay down or laying down some of them but here's uh, the spalted maple handle I'm guessing I don't know somebody can tell me probably what they think that is that one I don't know what that one is is that the double bit it may be the double bit but anyways that same booth I'm here at right here you can see I'm filthy too I just left from delivering firewood and while I was out that direction I went ahead and stopped there. Paris is where I made a delivery to. And uh, on the way back, uh, I was going through, or I was kinda going right by Winchester and that's where this Peddler's Mall is at. There had quite a few different axes there, but I really didn't, I didn't see any names on any of them. And not to say that that doesn't mean they're not good axes. I don't really know a whole lot myself when it comes to that. I'm sure there's far more educated people on that matter than me. A lot of the guys I watch seem to know their stuff. As far as me with axes, I'm not uh, real educated on them a whole lot. I mean, I know what splits and what doesn't and the splitting profile and stuff like that, but as far as the name brands and all of that stuff, I don't really know a lot of good ones. And Plum is one I've heard a lot about. Um, I, li I like the head on that one there. I like the head and the handle's a pretty good length too. I like, I, I myself, I don't really like short handles myself. I only got some axe handles. Actually, I've had these now for about a week. I just haven't had everything I needed to put them together. But look at this one here, it's pretty neat. Um, it almost looks like spalted maple or something. These already have a shine on them and everything, so I'm not gonna do anything to them. The booth that I told you about, uh, I told you about in uh, in Winchester. I don't know if I said it was in Winchester, but the Peddler's Mall. There's a booth there where somebody makes and sells these. Pretty good looking handle, really. I don't know how good this type of wood is for splitting. See, beveled in. They know they knew to do that. This is a single bit right here, a single bit handle here, and they come with a wedge too, so that's pretty cool. There's one. That's the, that's the lightest one out of all of them too. Here's another one. See, it's already got a shine to it. Wedge. This one's quite a bit heavier, so I'm guessing that's some sort of hardwood. I don't know. I honestly, other people maybe will tell by looking at that. I can't. They're pretty green. And like I said, they've already sanded it and put a shine on it. Feels good in the hands too. And then here's the last one. Here's the last one and it's a double bit. Pretty, pretty green in this wood too. And it's also heavier. Very pretty grain, actually. Here's the, the that side. It's almost like they put glue on the bottom to keep it from cracking or something like if it hit the ground. I don't know if you can see that. They beveled the end as well. What I like too is the prices on these things, in my opinion, like for what time it takes somebody to do this, and the shine they put on it, it's $6.99 for that, which I thought was a great deal. I know at Lowe's they're like $20 and upwards, which I know they use good hickory and stuff like that, but still, I don't, I'm not sure what this is, but for $6.99, I'm pretty happy with that. 
I bought them there for years and that's where I intend to keep buying them. They also had a lot of axes there. I'll show some of the footage of that. I found some, I just didn't really find any that I really wanted to buy at the moment while I was there. Okay. So anyways, there's those, there's those three handles. I'm going to try to clean this head, this head up here. This is the main one I was wanting to hang. You remember if you've seen if you've seen my video before I showed this one already. It's an older axe head. It's HC Herald is what it was said on it. So I'm going to try to see if I can get it cleaned up and I've got a sander an electric sander, but I don't have any sandpaper for it. So I've got a sanding block here, so I'm just gonna use that. My grinder went down on me here recently. Just... A little bit of wood glue. I just bought some of the Gorilla brand glue earlier while I was out for the wedge. that there's what it looks like now you can't really see that can you there we go it looks pretty rough try to get it cleaned up a little bit now this is not my preferred method by any means to clean an axe head uh, my grinder angle grinder here recently and really it was my fault i think i left it out during when we got a little bit of rain and Went to turn it on and the thing went to start after that but that would definitely be what i was used would use to do something like this and uh it would get it done so much faster too here i'm using sandpaper i use a, a file and uh i ended up finding a piece of sandpaper that fit my uh sander so that made it a little quicker but uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend, uh, I'm sure a lot of people that know anything about them already know this, but if you don't, and if you're wanting to clean one of these ax heads and get it cleaned up good, get the rust off and have it looking better. If you've got an angle grinder, that's the thing to use. And you can use just the regular like grinding uh, wheel that comes with them, or you can get uh, wheels that have sandpaper on them. And honestly, I'd probably recommend those because they're not as aggressive as the grinding wheel that, that you use, but won't take as much material off. And uh, you can get them cleaned up really quick with one of those. But the method I had, to, I used here, I was just using what I had. I was ready to go ahead and put these things together. I've got two angle grinders, and neither one of them will even start. So that's something I'm going to have to invest in here soon is another angle grinder. <clears throat> I'm bad about leaving tools out and forgetting them, and that's and that's not a good thing to do at all. I, I recently had my Bosch. Uh, charger battery charger left it out as well and uh, now I can't charge my batteries for my power drill so and that really comes in handy a power drill does as I'm sure many of you know but I was very happy with the way this thing turned out I mean this is like I said this takes so much longer than here I am with a file and water and it takes so much longer but I was pretty happy honestly with the end result of this I didn't end up uh, shining the whole head but I actually liked the way I did it. I kind of do like leaving some of the age look on it. I just wanted to make sure I got, got all the rust off of it and everything. And that stuff that, that I'm removing there is really, if I'm not mistaken, is like a protective coat anyway. So definitely doesn't hurt it to be on there. I just wanted to try to remove the rust from it as best as I could. Or at least somewhat. Maybe I didn't do it as best as I could. But. And I really like those handles too. Um, I went with the heavier one out of the single bits. I mean, that, that small tip maple one's beautiful. And honestly, that one I'm probably going to put together and probably end up just hanging on the wall in my shed here. This shed, too, another thing about it, um, I got that shed for free from a firewood customer for free. A 10-foot wide by 22-foot long shed. And I'm so happy with that. I had, I had one that I was paying payments on, actually, a shed, and it was 10 by 16. I think I was paying 225 or 250 a month on that thing, and you had to do it for like three years. It wasn't worth that at all, the price, but I was so, I wanted so bad to have a, a place where I could work on my stuff and then 
uh, have my tools out of the weather too. So I ended up doing that. But then after that guy, uh, he sent me a message and he said, hey, do you know anybody that'd be interested in this? And I told him, yeah, I'd be interested. And he said, well, do you have a way to haul it? And it just so happens that I have somebody that's uh, married into my family and has been since I was, well, since before I was born probably, who runs a tow truck. And uh, I called him up and he said, yeah, it'll probably be a little bit before I can get to you. And it did end up taking maybe a few weeks after the phone call before he got to it. But thank goodness he did because everybody else that I called was saying that it was too long for their tow trucks and that it would be hanging off the end. But uh, he ended up getting it for me, brought it out here to the house, and then he 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 couldn't get it exactly where I wanted it because his tow truck uh, wouldn't fit in there. So he told me he would end up coming back and straightening it up for me because it was kind of at an angle. But uh, I just got the old Dodgy Wadi and went on the other side of the fence on my neighbor's property and hooked a chain to my truck and to the shed. And that truck, sure enough, pulled that shed, a big 22-foot by a 10 foot shed and it's, it's got metal siding and then it's got uh, OSB on the walls and inside and out if I'm not mistaken it has wrap on it I'm very happy it's nothing fancy or nothing like that but for free I mean I'm guessing if I've got one that size from that guy that I found on for he charged 10000 for it and I got the thing for free I paid at the tow truck driver I think $350 or something like that to bring it over here which I thought was reasonable he was, like I said, he was the only one that would even do it. I called probably six other tow places because he was so busy, the guy was, that I knew. So I was trying to get it here sooner. But, and every one of them said that it was too big. They didn't have a truck that was long enough for it, they said. So I'm really glad that I know him and was able to get that done. That shed's really handy. I mean, I think every man really, and maybe women feel the same way, but I feel like every man loves to have a place where he can go work on it. On, whether it's just pools or build things, maybe put a table together or something, whatever you like to do, just your own space to go and do it. I know me and, and the place where we live, uh, we've got four kids, so it's pretty hectic in there sometimes. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm very thankful. All my kids are young. My oldest is only, he's just now turning 10. And then I've got a five-year-old boy, a four-year-old girl, and an eight-month-old girl. So I'm just 30 years old myself, so. Um, so it's pretty hectic at the age they're at they're always fighting and arguing over whose turn it is to do this and stuff like that so having that building to go out there too um, it's, it's, it's really a good place to go out and just kind of get away and get a little bit of quiet time and do stuff like this here and have a place too just to store your tools and stuff because I've got a lot of stuff in there I don't want my little kids getting a hold of like axe heads and throw files or anything but as you see here I don't want them getting a hold of any of that stuff. It's very dangerous. So it's very handy to have something like that. And like I said, for free, I'll be so happy with that. Another thing I picked up here a while back, I know it's kind of random, but I picked up a big cedar swing set with a tunnel slot and everything for free from a firewood customer. $1,400 swing set, if I'm not mistaken. I took my trailer over there and loaded it up and, and brought it home and put it together the rest of the it, it, Her husband already had it put together most of the way. and. Uh, so I brought it home and just kind of finished it up for the most part anyways and uh, my kids love it. They play on it quite a bit. So uh, you do run into some really good connections when you do this kind of stuff. You just meet so many different people and I feel really blessed really for all the people I've met and the things that I've been able to acquire through customers whether it's firewood or landscaping. Like I said, this would have been so much quicker if you could see that sandpaper is falling apart on me there now. There was an old piece of sandpaper and it just would have been so much quicker with an angle grinder. But anyways, this I was able to get it done the way that I was satisfied with after with, with what I had. I'd had the handles for probably a week at this point and I was just ready to go ahead and get, get that head hung on there. And uh, honestly, I love the hacks, too. I'm not going to lie. But that adds the texture a little. I feel like it's a little bit heavier than the Fiskers. I'm actually going to leave a lot of this on the front. I've uh, shined the back up here quite a bit, though. And I'm, I'm going to kind of let it blend in and just leave this. Sand it down a little bit and get the rust off. And then I'm going to, I'm trying to sharpen this. 
a little bit right now with this file. I think it'll turn out pretty good when it's done. I don't know if you could hear that or not in that previous clip there, but one of my little girls was in the background crying. And anytime she gets hurt, she's very overdramatic and sits there and screams until somebody gives her attention and babies her pretty much. But, uh, I was pretty happy with how this axe head turned out. I really was. And like I said, I, I, I've said it before in a previous video anyways, I'd like to learn a little bit more about these. I think it's an HC Herald. And uh, I'd never heard of one before that, but uh, I think it, uh, what I read online was that the company had started in the 70s. So not a real old ax head by any means compared to some of these other ones that are 30s and 40s and 50s and around that time. This one, I guess, started in the 70s. So I'm not sure how old this particular one was. I'm guessing pretty old though, because it belonged to my friend's papa. So I'm guessing it was, it was a pretty old one. He had a lot of other old tools, so it wouldn't surprise me at all. And he seemed like the kind of man that would hold on to things too, kind of like me. If I'm able to, you know, I'm, I'm pretty hard on my stuff, harder than I should be, really. So that's something I need to learn. Well, really, I know how to do it. It's something I need to do is really maintain my equipment much better than I do. That way it'll last me longer. I don't uh, treasure my axes or my chainsaws or anything like that. I mean, I'm thankful for them and try to take care of them, but I'm not like the kind of person that is obsessed with them at by any means you know if my axe breaks it's it's broke you know it's an axe i'll repair it or get another one same with a chainsaw you know of course i want to take care of them but i i don't get real attached to tools really to be honest with you i just don't i don't treasure them um but uh i was i was starting to say it earlier on here uh this axe felt really good to swing it felt a little heavier than the fiskers did and honestly, could generate quite a bit of power with this one. The head seems pretty heavy. And not only that, I think another thing that makes the Fisker so light is the handle, how it's like hollow on the Fiskers. Um, and this, the handle on this axe here, the particular handle I, I hung it on, was actually pretty solid. I don't know what kind of wood it was, but it was a pretty solid handle. So, I, And I think the handle length, if I'm not mistaken, I measured them before. And I can't remember what that came out to. It may have been 36 inches. I can't remember exactly. But it's a, it was the same length as the Fisker's handle, which I like. Me, myself, I like a long handle. I'm not a big fan of short handles, to be honest with you. I think they have their place, for sure, in certain things. But as far as splitting goes, I like a, a long handle, myself. And you're just able to generate so much more power with that. And that's the a big point of why I don't use a chopping block because you just lose so much momentum when you use a chopping block. You really do. And not only that, as far as like sharpening axes go and things like that, like my Fiskers, I think I've used it now. Well, since since I've I've been using Fiskers now for the last four years, if I'm not mistaken, around that. But uh, the particular one I have now, I know I've used it for at least a year without sharpening at one time, and that thing still splits great. So it doesn't bother me really. And, and in, in my mind, that's the main point of a chopping block is to keep from doling your ax. I don't know what else it would be for, you know, because it's a lot more work to have to take the piece of wood and put on the chopping block. And then when you split it, it falls apart and then you've got to pick them back up. Whereas the way that I do it and many other people do it as well, and I'm not saying anything against a chopping block. I'm really not trying to say that. So please don't get offended. I'm telling you why I don't like to use them. Um, it's just because really the only point I really see in a chopping block is to keep your axe head from getting dull. And it, that doesn't really happen to me. And I, and I hit the ground a lot. Um, but the way I do it, I'm able to swing from angles and I don't got to pick the wood up so much. I can just stack it. And then if it falls over a lot of the times, I can just hit it where it's at. So I really like that style myself. I don't really like having to pick it up. And that's another reason I didn't like a log splitter. Honestly, there was... Whenever I would split it, the particular one I had, it didn't have like a log rack to where it fell off and it landed on the rack and that rack caught it. Mine, it fell off and it, if it fell off on the other side of the machine, you had to walk around and pick it up. And I'm sure a log rack would make that easier. And not only that, though, the wedge was extremely slow on the one I had. It was a Troy built and it was a 27 ton and it had a Honda engine, very good engine, but it was just very slow and and I just didn't like it. I was I, After hand splitting for years and then 
getting that and trying it out because everybody told me to. Um, I would, just the whole time I was doing it, I was thinking, by the time this wedge gets there, I could have done had this split into six pieces. You know, by the time this wedge even hits it. And I know there's some that are so much faster than that, but still, like I, the other day I seen this guy and he was, and I'm not trying to call the guy out, that's why I'm not gonna say a name or anything, but the guy, his video was titled something to the nature of like $120 an hour or something like that, uh, splitting wood. And I, and I kind of watched a little bit of it and he was using a splitter, four way, four way wedge on it. And uh, he ended up splitting what looked like to be maybe two face cords of wood or something like that. And it was around an hour that it took him to do it with a four way wedge. And I kind of added that up to myself because he didn't he didn't put his time for bucking and delivering and loading and all that stuff. He was pretty much saying 120 an hour was uh, just his splitting time, pretty much. He was pretty much counting just the time it took to split as as he have got it about where I want it. I'll come back in here on this just in a moment. I'm not going to worry about getting all this stuff off. Wanted to mainly get the surface rust. I'm gonna hit this a little bit more. I don't like to look at that really. Old as you can tell, but got it with a bunch of other stuff. This stuff as well. A lot of Dewalt tools. Pass load, nail gun. Bunch of cases for Dewalt. For a guy that I sort of firewood do. Suzuki, 70 model, I believe. Pretty good shape, too. Old one.
car waxer. I'm going with this one. Really tape these things. Edge. They've already got some sort of clear coat on this, so I'm not going to do anything to the handle. I think they're beautiful the way they are. I think you see it better here in the light now. Those are honestly, I think there's some beautiful. What kind of wood that is? This one was my favorite, though. I just really like that spalted maple look in it. It's so much lighter than that one I just had in my hands. So much lighter. They seem to be well made handles though. They really do. They're straight. bit of space up here in the front seems to be common with a usually where the space is at there's some in the back too but I'm hoping when I get that down that'll as I was saying before uh, the guy uh, titled his video $120 an hour splitting and he didn't count uh, the time that it took to buck the wood or to deliver the wood or to stack the wood or load the wood or any of that which you wouldn't have to stack it I guess if you were taking it right on but uh, anyways my point with this is like I made a video here recently and, and uh, it came out to $75 an hour um, but now I included estimated the time it would take to deliver that wood and to buck the wood and the splitting split the wood and load the wood and all that and it came out to four hours. So it was really, I split it with, I split a full quart of wood and I think it was an hour and three minutes around that. Get some of those little and I split a hand split a full quart of wood in that amount of time. Now, if I was just to only count the splitting time as profit, that would be $300 an hour. But that's not really reasonable because you have to count your time that it takes to load the wood, your time that it, you're not getting any profit from that wood until you deliver it. And in order to deliver it, you have to acquire the wood you have to buck the wood you have to split the wood you have to load the wood then you have to deliver the wood and and if you do stack it you have to stack the wood so all that comes out really you know so i didn't in my video i didn't try to put that i made 300 an hour um because that would be unreasonable really um because it would take four hours is what i estimated to deliver so it came out to 75 dollars an hour which is still very good money but, and what my point with this is, like I've said before, that I know I can't compete with log splitters, but really, on a certain scale, you really can with hand splitting. You really can, and to a certain extent. Now, when you get into these, like, firewood processors and stuff like that, and they've got all their wood delivered to their house and all this stuff, then, yeah, these huge businesses, they're, it'd be very hard to compete with something like that. But uh, as far as, like, a, re a, a lot of log splitters you see... I feel like you can compete to a certain extent with them just splitting by hand. And I intend to for as long as I can. I love hand splitting. I enjoy hand splitting. And honestly, I think I would enjoy a log splitter to a certain extent if I had the right one. But I don't think that I would ever enjoy a log splitter as well as I enjoy hand splitting. I don't think I ever would. There's something about hand splitting that is just, I don't know. I don't know what it is really. It's just so natural. It just seems like something that's just natural for a man to do. It's, it's like swimming. I'm, I mean, I'm sure anybody that knows what it feels like to swim. Uh, when I was a little kid, we used to go, which which I won't do it with my kids, but when I was a little kid, we used to go to rivers and stuff and swim. It's very dangerous. But my dad would take us, and just the feeling of getting in that water after not being in there for like a year, it just it was there was no other feeling like it. 
and hand splitting is kind of like that as well especially when you get comfortable with hand splitting and you have an axe that you're comfortable with and uh, it's just something that's very natural and something that's very unique and uh, I really enjoy it and and, and now as far as a, a log splitter goes to me that's not a unique thing in, in its own sense it is to a certain extent but it's not a natural move of the body like hand splitting is hand splitting you're 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 using your own body to do all of the work it's, it's it, like you are with swimming you're using muscles that you normally wouldn't use with swim, swimming hand splitting i feel like you're kind of doing the same the thing front too way. but it still needs to go as a little you can ways. see that head was kind of tight when it sat down there so i had to trim that up quite a bit and i was using my knife to do it New broke that thing i had that for like that's three or four probably. years i think i'm saying it right here i think that's cherry years. wood so you have to do it's, what I made that it, it looks like cherry. ran its course it's time to make another one but it works good for uh, a lot of different things. It's not so hard on wood if you hit wood with it. But my point is uh, hand splitting, I feel like you can make uh, quite a bit of money uh, doing hand splitting. And to me, it's just far more enjoyable. I'm able to make plenty enough profit hand splitting for me personally. Yeah, this one I had to take off quite a bit of material on this axe. Right there, I'm trying to just kind of loosen it, if I'm not mistaken, to get it off of there. But if I'm not mistaken, I, added, I ended up having to take off quite a bit of material. And you, right there, I was just trying to cut that off because it was kind of digging in, the head was. And I ended up cutting myself here pretty good. And it's so stupid, too. I do things a lot that I know better than. Like how I'm cutting towards my, I know better than do that. But it's like a lot of times I'll be in a hurry and I'll just do it anyways. Here it is. Right across it. <laughs> it was kind of weird. I mean, I watched it in slow motion how it happened. It, it jerked back and it literally just went right across. It just ran its course all the way across my thumb. Well, it could have been a lot worse. Never fun. That was dumb. Got it down enough now, I believe, to where I can go ahead and put my wedge in. Bit of a gap in the back here. See that? The sides and the front look pretty good. Leave that wedge will hold it just fine when I get in. And here. I'm going to do both sides. That from my old woman, her husband who welded it together, ended up breaking the handle on it, but gonna be coming out <laughs> you can see that really spread the head out there or the handle out there in the head so I don't think it's gonna be coming off anyways I'm on the old steel tub As I said, there's a small gap there and in the back. The 
sides here are pretty tight. I don't think it's going anywhere after that wedge. It's pretty tight. Cut that off of there though. The top there, not much space at all. I'm happy with that. A little space there. A little there too. Later I'll probably put some metal wedges in too. <laughs> I really like the look of that head. I really like the look of that head. I was able to get some of that chip out. You see I had to just kind of bring it in. A lot better though. <laughs> Let's see how it does. I was really happy with how this axe turned out and I'll, I'll plan to use this in many future videos. And uh, my point of saying, I wasn't trying to at all belittle that guy's video that, who I'm talking about, I'm not gonna mention a name, or say that he did anything wrong either. I'm just trying to say, you know, if if I was to use the same logic he used, I would have uh, said that I was $300 per hour. You know, the way that I was able to get a full cord done and what I charged for it. But uh, my point being is uh, hand splitting, you can make good profit hand splitting. Because even though a log splitter, like they say, it's, it doesn't really get tired like humans do, when you get in shape for this, you can go for many hours. Really, some of the guys may be tired of log splitting before you are, are too tired to keep split with an ax if you get in good shape for it. I really believe that. Because you can go for hours upon hours hand splitting when you get used to it. Um, so I'm, I'm very much uh, for hand splitting and always will be. And I know that there's guys that will always be for log splitters. And I'm not against log splitters either. I'm not. But I'm not as, I'm just, they're not really for me personally. But I'm not at all against other people using them. So I wanted to make that point. I'm not trying to say that I am. But I plan to, in my business, I plan to hand split. Probably as long as I'm able to. And if I do get a split in the future, I still plan to hand split. And this isn't the best wood either that I, right here. This is all I had at home pretty much. This is my house here or my home where I live. And this is all I had was, was this wood for the most part. I think I had some really big maple rounds around back kind of in the woods. Um, so this wasn't the best wood, but uh, you'll see some more of this ax in, in the future doing a lot of oak and things like that. Um, but these rounds, they, uh, some of them were pretty, not not real solid, but some of them were as well. I had quite a bit of, they were pretty tough as well still, some of them. But uh, I do plan to use this a lot in the future, actually probably in my next video. Here soon I'll be going back to that elm. I know I've been talking about that for a long time. I've had so many things come up. Um, but anyways, uh, I'll let you get back to watching this. I'm really happy with how this ax turned out. I'm not very good at doing this. I've just, this is my first single bit I've ever actually hung. I've done a double bit like twice before. So that tells you, shows you how experienced I am. Not very much at all. But uh, I really enjoyed the process of it. Very much enjoyed taking an old ax head and, and uh, getting it in shape to where it's uh, usable again. Rather than seeing them just sit on a shelf somewhere collecting rust. Um, so I plan to be on a lookout for many more and from now on I plan to make many axes in the future with many different sorts of handles do my own handle making and things like that I'm very 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 interested in it and uh, it's just a very good feeling putting something like that together and then getting to use it as well knowing that you did it um, and I watch a lot of guys that do it that are far better at it than I am and I'm, I love watching it very much enjoy it and love seeing them go out and use them as well but uh, I'll quit talking now and let you get back this video. It should be almost over. I appreciate everybody that, that tunes in and watches the channel. Uh, me and my family all appreciate it. And uh, very much thankful to everybody that comments and all of the positive feedback as well. But uh, until next time, be safe doing this. And thank you for watching again. And God bless.